So this is the 2021 G20 BMW 3 Series Touring. And this is my 1989 BMW E30 3 Series Touring. And today we're going to be doing a comparison between the two and seeing what's changed over 30 plus years of progress. So as I mentioned, there's a considerable amount of age difference between these two cars. Mine's a 1989 model, this is a 2021 model. So we're looking at, you know, over 30 years. And it is quite impressive to see how things have changed in some regards, but also you realize that maybe some things aren't always for the better. Now, one of those key areas is weight. Now the E30 Touring weighs around about 1,250 kilos, but this G20 Touring weighs 1,740 kilos. And this is actually a 330E, so it's potentially a little bit heavier because it's got that battery pack, but you still get the idea. That's over 500 kilograms of weight difference. In terms of their overall size is where you can probably see from the shot, there's a considerable difference there as well. Now the G20 Touring is around about 4,700 millimeters in length. E30 Touring, about 4,300. So, you know, we've, we've got about half a meter extra there and the G20 is a couple of hundred mil wider as well and it's considerably taller. But we'll go into that in a little bit more detail later on. For now, I just want to talk about some of the main kind of design features, if you like. We do have that twin kidney grille and on the E30, as you probably know, it's much, much smaller, it's much narrower, and it's kind of got that whole like shark nose design that we're used to seeing from 1980s BMWs. Whereas when we look at the G20 Touring, we're obviously in an age now where grills, for whatever reason, are getting bigger and bigger. And you can see that's definitely the case on this car with it kind of wrapping over the front of the bonnet. Yeah, and it's, and it's just grown so much in width. Another key difference again is the headlights. Again, from the 1980s, it was very, very common to see these quad headlights on BMWs. Now, Modern day BMWs don't necessarily have exactly the same design, but there is a little bit of kind of reminiscence back to that time with two headlights kind of contained into one unit on each side. So there are some things that are similar, but you know, there's also some pretty clear differences as well as I'm sure you can see. Now, another big difference as well in the 30 years of development is wheel size. Now on this G20, it's a 19 inch rim. And actually for these days, that's a relatively small rim. We've got many rims these days on cars you know, well over 20 inches. Um, so this is a 19, but if we jump over to the E30, this is actually on a set of 15 inch rims. And this was the biggest set you could get on the car. As standard, they came with 14 inch rims, which I've actually got a set of those at home. These are some BBS alloys that have been added after, and I much prefer these design. This is kind of like a basket weave design. And um, yeah, again, very 1980s, very of the time. Now, I do think the G20's wheels look really nice actually. And, you know, on some of my other reviews of more recent BMWs, you can see this kind of very intricate and refined wheel design, you know, is appearing all over the place. And I actually really like the way it looks. Moving to the rear of the car then, there are of course some, you know, differences and some similarities back here. Of course, being a Touring, we've got that kind of sloping roof line into the tailgate, which is, you know, exactly the same on the E30. We've got the rear wiper as I've got as well. But this whole design is just kind of more modern, I suppose. The, the rear tail lights are totally different. And, you know, on mine, it's the very kind of boxy 1980s look, whereas this is the much more kind of futuristic look, if you like, kind of like 3D uh, sort of printed headlights there. So they look really cool. We've also got the twin tail pipes on either side, whereas back in the 1980s, most cars didn't have that. They would have one or two on the left hand side of the car. So, you know, it's subtle differences here, but there is quite a lot in common on the rear end. So one of the first things you notice as soon as you jump into either of these cars, of course, is the interior. It's quite clear to me that significant progress has been made, especially in the material usage. Back in the 80s, there were a lot of these kind of like what we would class as cheap plastics now all over the place. You know, the dashboard, the center console, everything's just kind of, yeah, very plasticky. But I do like the simplicity of that. And we will, I'll jump into that car in a minute and we'll kind of like talk about some of the things I like about that. But, you know, in terms of, you know, the materials, the technology in these newer cars, it's, it's pretty incredible actually how much tech is packed into these cars these days, to be honest. You know, a fully digital instrument cluster, these big screens, all this connectivity, we've got satellite navigation. As I mentioned, this is a 330E, so we've got some hybrid technology going on here as well with the drivetrain. So you kind of notice all this as soon as you jump in. But in terms of like how it feels in here, well, the driving position is actually quite similar. It's quite common for BMWs to be able to put the seat really low. That's exactly the same in the E30, and it's just, you know, it feels exactly the same in here as well. As far as options, this car is pretty well spec. We've got the heated seats, heated steering wheel, and everything just feels nice. Leather seats in this. Now you could actually option that in E30s at the time. Mine actually doesn't have that. It's got the cloth seats, 
but you know this still feels like a, a great place to be i'm very familiar with these modern day bmw interiors and you know they're extremely comfortable extremely quiet and very very well made and for me it actually represents probably one of the places you get excellent value for money on these new bmws immediately then jumping into the e30 you notice how much more open this car is we've got very thin a pillars the doors are much thinner and as i mentioned in the other car there's much more plastic in here with the dashboard and you know all this center console it's very kind of as i say what we would class as cheap plastic but i really love the simplicity and minimalism of these 1980s cars the steering wheel beautifully thin rim and what that actually means out on the road is you get so much feedback through it. you can feel it wriggling around as you go through bumps but we will talk about that later because we are going to be going out in both cars on the road <clears throat> as i mentioned i've got the cloth anthracite seats in this so my car is like a mid-spec sort of car and it's got some options on but it's not anywhere near fully loaded and some of the options it's got are these electric windows it's got the sports steering wheel the sunroof you know it's just little bits and pieces like that um quite common on e30s of this area so yeah I, I really like the way it's spec'd actually of course in terms of infotainment in these cars there's, there's very little i've got a blower punks radio it's very good but i don't use it all that often because when i drive this car it's all about really the driving about the sound about the engine and just you know taking it out on some nice roads so i'm not really fussed about any of that what i do love of course is these 1980s style bmw analog dials they're just some of the best around i think it's so clear it just gives you the information that you need and nothing else there's no distractions on there and of course they're very easy to read which isn't always the case on a lot of these digital instruments you see on newer cars so yeah I'm, I'm a massive fan and there's plenty of room in here as well although this is a smaller car because the actual skin of it is so much smaller and thinner you know there's plenty of room in here it's by no means cramped at all there's loads of leg room even in the back and you can quite easily fit sort of four or five people in here without an issue being a touring model then practicality is really at the top of the list even on this e30 we've got a ton of space in here and i've mentioned this in some of my other videos on this car it's incredibly usable you've got these little pockets as well that run into the wheel arch so this side's basically just totally open for storage on the other side you've got a jack and there would have been a first aid kit and stuff there at one point but mine's a bit more empty now and then underneath the floor we've got the likes of the spare wheel so yeah in terms of like where these cars both sit you know the g20 is just as usable um, you probably get a little bit more space in there potentially, but you know, they both do a very, very good job. And this is why I love the E30. Gotta love that straight six soundtrack. So mine's actually a 320i, which means it's got the two litre straight six, as opposed to the 2.5. But that's by no means a bad thing. I mean, I put a slightly better exhaust on it. I've got a Scorpion back box. Which, as you can tell makes quite a nice sound and that's the one thing you notice really actually is just how kind of engaging this whole experience is compared to the newer bmws listen to that thing go it actually pulls quite hard above 4000 rpm of course it isn't naturally aspirated engine so most of the power is happening at those kind of rpms anyway get the heel and toe downshifts in out here second gear uh, it just feels great it's perhaps a little bit more like wallowy than the newer cars the suspension setup is much softer but you kind of get used to that and you can kind of drive around it you know you're not going to be absolutely thrashing the thing but it's perfectly suitable for these b-roads speed manual gearbox it really is joyous to drive I mean we're not talking crazy power levels here this car as standard makes around 129 horsepower and 120 foot pounds of torque as I say most of that's coming in higher in the rev range but at 1250 kilos it's it's a surprising amount of power and it definitely gets the job done but it's by no means quick it's, it's much more just about how engaging this car is as I mentioned earlier this really thin rim on the steering wheel mixed with a hydraulic steering rack means you get so much feedback through and as soon as you go over any little bump you can feel each wheel doing its own thing and just giving that little input back
the main thing that stands out really is just how much more visibility you have in the E30. As I mentioned before, with these really thin A pillars, it's kind of like being in the fishbowl. I know a lot of people use that analogy, but it really is because you've got all these windows, you've got the mirrors as well. You can just kind of see like 360 degrees around you at all times. So it certainly makes it very easy to place on the road and take around those much narrower B roads as well. I've actually done quite a few videos on this car on the channel and if you are interested in seeing more of this car I'll, uh, I'll link the playlist here and you can go and give those a you know sort of a watch. We've done quite a few things with it in the 18 months I've owned it so um, yeah hopefully you'll enjoy those. So to summarize then the E30 is very much a, a cruiser if you like and I suppose really it's quite similar to the G20 330E that we've got with us today because that too isn't right at the top of the kind of performance level of the new G23 series because the likes of the you know, 340i and the M4 and M3, you know, they're right at the top of the line of that latest generation. So yeah, they're quite similarly matched in many respects, but utterly different in the way they drive. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of engaging driving experiences and this really in the E30 is uh, where I think I'm most at home. Never get bored of that six cylinder soundtrack. So, out on the road in the G20 330E then, well, it's vastly different to the E30 as you would expect. Um, you know, I mentioned when I was out in the E30 that the ride is a little bit wallowy in that. And the first thing you notice when you start pushing on in this is that it's much more composed in the way it deals with all that sort of dynamic change. So, yes, okay, the suspension in this is a little bit firmer, but it's not to the point where it's totally uncomfortable. And when you push on, there's, there's just far less body roll. So it certainly feels a lot more capable. And all that actually helps to, of course, hide the extra 500 kilos of weight it's carrying over the E30. The other thing, the drivetrain in this, um, is it's a little bit unique because it's a hybrid setup. So we've got a two litre four cylinder engine that produces 184 horsepower, and that's assisted by a 113 horsepower electric motor. So it gives a total of about 292 horsepower and the combined torque I think is about 310 foot-pounds so it's it's pretty quick to be honest and that's made it to the ZF uh, eight-speed gearbox of course there's no manual option in this so yeah the, the drivetrain feels totally different because you've got that electric motor down low which actually does a really good job of filling the torque gap as the turbo spills up so I'm actually quite a big fan of this kind of hybrid drivetrain um, in an application like this because I think it works really well so the 0 to 60 on this is about 5.9 seconds and top speeds around about 140 miles an hour. So that's certainly quick enough for daily use, I would say. Just chuck it into here then. So yeah, it feels pretty nice to be honest. The steering is much quicker in the E30, and this is something I've mentioned in other videos. I think lock to lock, it's something crazy like four turns, whereas this is much closer to two. So the front end feels very agile, to be honest, because you barely need any turn of the steering wheel to pitch it into those corners. But yeah, it really kind of takes the bumps nicely over these bumpy country roads, to be honest. It is rear wheel drive. I think you can get an X drive model of this, so an all wheel drive model, but. I quite like the rear wheel drive feel to this. It certainly feels like there's you know, power being sent to the rear, which actually is something you don't necessarily feel in the E30 just because of the power level. In the wet, it certainly feels a bit rear driven because you tend to get a little bit of spool up of a single wheel through that open diff. Um, but yeah, for the most part, that doesn't feel massively rear, rear wheel drive just because of the lower power level. So in terms of like electric range of this, because you can use it in a fully electric mode, I think you can get somewhere around 30, 35 miles out of it. 
which is pretty good and it means you can basically do the commute if you want and then you can charge it up and it, it does actually charge the battery while driving as well which is a pretty nice feature to have so you don't need to desperately rely on you know, third party chargers and things like that of course with that electric motor it's just so quiet out on the road now in my e30 yes i've got a performance back box on there it does make quite a bit more sound but that's exactly what i want that car to be i want it to be much more of an engaging driving experience but i definitely like how refined the g20 is and that's something you see in a lot of newer bmws is just how quiet they can be out on the road so yeah that, that's one thing that's definitely advanced over the 30 years of course a lot of that's down to the thickness of the doors and just all the additional safety sort of structures that are in place that ultimately add more between you and the outside so yeah you get much less sound coming into the cabin now it's interesting because with this being sort of a hybrid there is some electric regen effectively going on when you hit the brake pedal so it does feel like it bites quite hard and it's very very soft on the initial bite so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the biggest fan of that to be honest but yeah it's that's obviously totally different to the e30 which is a, just a standard hydraulic setup so yeah certainly feels quite different once you start to put your foot down though there's plenty of performance out of this engine you can definitely feel the electric motor lower down in the rev range just providing a lot of torque and then as the power builds it really does you can feel it pulling harder and harder a bit more like a naturally aspirated engine actually certainly quick off the line it has to be said for rear wheel drive that's an immense amount of traction it is relatively dry outside but yeah that's certainly impressive so i suppose the question is can you actually have fun in a modern bmw and i, I think you can you know i've driven a few of these later bms these days and you know they're definitely not as engaging as an e30 is and you'd probably totally expect that but you know they just serve a slightly different purpose and they do things in a slightly different way and I think it works perfectly well and let's be honest people aren't really going to be comparing you know a brand new 330e to an e30 320i it's not going to be choosing one or the other but it's just interesting to see kind of how much has changed over that 30 year gap so in terms of the sound from this engine of course it's nowhere as good as a straight six in my opinion but it's certainly not bad Now, you know, Monday BMW, a lot of that is fake noise, but you know, it, it sounds like a four cylinder at least. It's not like they're overlaying a six cylinder soundtrack sort of over the engine. So I can kind of live with that, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. You'll probably, you'll probably think the same that a straight six definitely sounds better than an inline four. So it really has been very interesting seeing how BMW has developed its three series touring over the past 30 years. Obviously in many respects there's been some pretty major jumps in terms of engineering capabilities but I can't help but think an E30 is still really rather charming out on today's roads and offers something that the new 3 Series doesn't. Nevertheless we've really got to appreciate how capable and advanced the G23 Series Touring is and it really is a fantastic daily driver. Now of course it wouldn't have been possible to make this video without access to a G20 Touring so I'd therefore like to say a massive thanks to Virtue BMW T-Side for making this video possible. I will leave all their links in the description below and I'd be grateful if you can check them out and to be honest if you're in the market for a new car you should definitely check out the stock they've got in at the minute including this G20 Touring featured in this video.